Welcome once again, brothers and sisters, to this little video update. And it's Tuesday morning, October 29th, right here at the end of October as I'm recording this. And as always, I trust you're doing well and uh, being strengthened in God's grace in whatever things He's ordained in your life, even today, that you're trusting Him walking with Him, seeking to obey Him, and knowing the assurance and the confidence and the hope of His grace. Even this last Lord's Day, as we finished out things in Daniel chapter 3, that was much of the theme that we saw and that we reflected on with regard to the ongoing call for each of us to be resolved in worshiping God, assured that He is the God who always delivers. And in whatever he ordains in our circumstances and whatever the outcome in our path of obedience before him, uh, for us to walk in the assurance, the confidence, the expectation that he's with us and that he will be faithful to his promises, he'll be faithful to his purposes, and in whatever he ordains for us to face, whether in life or even in death, that he will deliver us into his presence in heaven, that he has us in his grip, and that his grace is always sufficient. And I just want to accent that and just encourage all of us again with the confidence that God gives grace sufficient for everything that he ordains in our lives. And all of us are in different circumstances. There may be similarities. We're all a part of the same church body, and we share in life in Christ together, which is such a huge blessing and joy. Uh, but in the specifics of our daily circumstances, there, there's so many differences, and yet they have the confidence and assurance again and again that in whatever God's ordained, His grace is sufficient. The Apostle Paul spoke of this repeatedly in his ministry through the letters that he wrote. One of those places is in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Listen to what he says here. He says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, he says, I worked harder than any of them. And he's referring to some of the other apostles. He says, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. And so he's affirming that even within the things God had ordained in his circumstances, the sufferings he experienced, the hard work he experienced, all of the persecutions he experienced, it was always God's grace, always God's grace that was at work within him. Another example of Paul speaking about this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where near the end of that letter, he's reflecting upon a thorn in the flesh that had been given to him, and he eagerly desired for that thorn to be taken away. And so he prayed to God three different times that the Lord would take it away, and the Lord's answer in that circumstance and that situation was, no, I'm not going to take it away. And the reason God tells Paul in verses 9 and 10 is because he wanted Paul to depend on the sufficiency of God's grace. And so he says in verse 9 and 10 of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, Paul says, But God said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, for when I am weak, then I am strong. And so God lovingly, wisely, powerfully, graciously was teaching Paul to be dependent on his grace moment by moment in the circumstances that God had ordained for him, including this thorn in the flesh, which he eagerly desired to, Paul did, to have it taken away. And yet God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. And so, brothers and sisters, what it means for us day by day, moment by moment, is that in whatever circumstances we're in, 
We're to be looking for, trusting the sufficiency of God's grace, continually looking to him in prayer and casting our cares upon him and seeking his mercy and his grace and his strength and his wisdom and the help we need for to us to walk in obedience in the things that he's called us to. There's certainly two directions, at least two directions, many others that we could think of for the application of this truth. One of them is for every believer in everyday life, for every single one of us in everyday life to trust that God's grace is sufficient and that he calls us to trust him. He calls us to walk in obedience to him. And so whatever your circumstances may be, however easy, however hard they may be at any given time, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're with children or without children, whether it's in the workplace or in the home or in the classroom, whatever challenges, whatever difficulties, whatever burdens you may be facing, brothers and sisters, God's grace is always sufficient and God always delivers. He always provides for us in his way and in his time, and he wants us to worship him, to keep trusting, to keep obeying, to keep depending, and to keep adoring him and knowing the sufficiency of his grace in Christ. So that's one avenue of application. One direction of application is for every believer in everyday life. Certainly another point of application, and as this is uppermost in all of our minds now, is for the American elections that are coming up just a week from today. God alone knows and God alone has ordained what the outcome of those elections are going to be as it relates to the presidential race, as it relates to propositions, as it relates to other offices within various levels of government. Just want to encourage us and remind us again to be praying, to be trusting God to work, to be asking God to work in ways that will allow peace and justice and the flourishing of people to continue in our land for the advancement of the gospel. But in whatever he's ordained in any of this, that we would trust him, that we would trust the sufficiency of his grace and to know that God is unchanging and that his purposes for us are unchanging and that his provision for us is unchanging and that the mission that he has called us to as his people in this world is unchanging. So may God help us all to continually be trusting, continually be worshiping, continually be obeying, and knowing that God's grace is constantly sufficient. And even as we sang this last Lord's Day, that what e'er our God ordains is right, and we can trust him. And so I pray that you'll know and continue to rest and rejoice in uh, the sufficiency of God's grace in whatever you are facing. And let's be praying for one another, encouraging one another uh, to these very ends. Well, we are gathering again this coming Lord's Day with our equipping hour at 9 a.m. It'll be week three of the series that we're doing on Christians and the civil government and politics. And this week, we're going to be looking at the purpose of government and the sovereignty of God. Very timely for us to be addressing that even this coming Lord's Day, just a couple of days before the election. And then our corporate worship service at 1030 will be continuing in Daniel, moving into chapter 4 and the sovereignty of God over kings and kingdoms. And so that's where we'll be, Lord willing, uh, during the worship service. And then we'll be gathering in the evening for our evening service for a time of uh, reflection around God's word and also a time of extended prayer. I want to remind you also there's a work day this coming Saturday at 8.30 a.m. We encourage you to come and be a part of just helping to care for the facilities that the Lord has provided for us. Uh, for however short or long you're able to be present, we love to have you be a part of that. There's a pancake breakfast that will be served at no charge. Get that. That's amazing. No charge. Um, so hope that you'll be able to come and be a part of that and share in what the Lord has for us. There's other items of information to be aware of uh, that accompany this uh, video with the newsletter that accompanies this. So pray and encourage you to uh, make note of those items. So thanks again for checking in. Really grateful that you do. And Lord willing, we'll see you this coming Lord's Day. Richest blessings, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.